Hi you guys and welcome back. We're going to start talking about the springtime harvest and what you can actually do with it. But the first thing we're going to talk about is leafy greens because these are the things that actually pop up first. We're talking about kale today. So kale is the most nutrient dense food item that you can actually consume. If you want to talk about anything that's going to be beneficial for your health, overall health, it's going to be kale. So if you're not consuming kale, you really need to get started doing this. So it's odd to me that some people don't like kale because I love kale. I can eat kale raw, I can eat kale in soup, I can eat kale in stews. As a matter of fact, I've got a great recipe that's for Italian sausage, eggplant, and kale. And if you guys don't, haven't tried that yet, you guys need to go give it a try. I'll put the link in the description for you guys so you can actually pull it up and make it. It's fabulous. And we actually like to use our rabbit sausage as well too. So again, kale. We're going to talk about kale today. Today we're going to be making kale chips. Now kale chips cannot be preserved for long-term storage because of the oil, the olive oil that goes on top of it. However, it is a very healthy snack item for you and your family and more than likely this is going to be one of the ways that you're going to get your children to eat kale because it's that good. And Lola here is videoing me so she's back there going, yes, <laughs> one of the only ways that she likes kale. Another way that we're gonna preserve it is to make kale powder. And what does kale powder do? Number one, kale powder can be preserved long-term and that allows you to store it until you can use it in the fall, winter months. Um, kale is an item that you can actually grow later on in the fall garden as well too, but you might as well have some kale powder put aside. You can use it in omelets, frittatas, quiches. You can add it to smoothies for a, um, a health benefit added to your smoothies. Whatever happens, you're going to want to go ahead and grow kale. If you don't want to invest in the garden space to grow it, grow it as a yard ornament and plant it in the front of your garden bed along with your perennial flowers that are going to come up. It's beautiful grown there. Um, you can use any type of kale you want to make kale chips and to dehydrate. Right now, this is actually my option because this is what is available at the markets. Our garden is not quite ready yet, but I wanted to get a jump ahead for you guys so you knew what you were doing. So again, any type of kale can be used. And this recipe that I'm gonna be included here for you is just a basic sea salt and garlic kale chip. Now, you can make any flavor you want. There's gonna be an article that I'm also gonna link in the description as well too on all the flavors that you can actually use to make it. And trust me, if there's a no fault. You can add whatever you want to make kale chips. But the basic item is gonna be olive oil because you want that to crisp up. And then the second item is gonna be sea salt if you would like or no salt at all and garlic powder but you can also use chili pepper, paprika to season it for a spicier item, or you can use um, nutritional yeast to add a cheesy flavor to it, or just sprinkle Parmesan at, um, at the very end of it, and it's gonna melt right onto your kale chips, and it's gonna be really good. So let's get started. We're gonna make some kale chips for you on this episode. Once you've washed your kale, go ahead and separate it from the stem. Make sure to remove some of the thick membranes that feed into the leaves as well. This will prevent any issues of even drying. To dry the leaves after you wash them, put them in a salad spinner or pat them dry with a clean dish towel. Break up the leaves into bite-sized pieces, a little bit larger than the size of an average potato chip. Add your favorite extra virgin olive oil, just enough to know the leaves are going to be coated. At this point, go ahead and add the sea salt and the garlic powder, massage it in, making sure that it's evenly distributed throughout the kale leaf. So if you wanted to just make dehydrated kale, all you needed to do would just be to wash the kale, completely clean it, strip it off the stems, take off the coarse little membranes that feed up through the leaves, and then the same thing, put it in the dehydrator and just let it go. And then what you'll do is you'll grind it down into a powder form. You can use that in smoothies, you can use that in quiches, frittatas, um, whatever you wanted to use it in, but remember, it just needs to be dehydrated and grounded down. One of your final steps is to go ahead and add the leaves to the dehydrator trays, making sure to not overlap too much. A little bit of an overlap is actually okay. 
go ahead and add your trays to the dehydrator and then you'll be ready to go and set the timer and temperature. The average dry time is about one to two hours at 135 degrees. However, this change based on the dehydrator you actually own. At about the one hour mark, go ahead and test the chips. If they're nice and crispy, they're done. If they feel a little bit moist, still continue to dry them until they're completely dried. Okay, so here is the final product. Um, it's really, really delicious. The kids have already eaten one tray. This is the second part of the second tray and Justin's about to come in and devour that. So as you could tell, perfectly crispy and crunchy. Let's see if I can, oops, can you hear that? Delicious, perfectly delicious. Healthy for you and very yummy and your children are actually gonna eat this. So if this is the only way for them to eat their kale, feed it to them in this manner. All right, you guys, that's it. That's how simple it is to go ahead and dehydrate kale chips. Now remember, if you wanna store kale long term, you're gonna to have to dry it as I showed you. And then from there, grind it down to a powder. Once it's in a powder form, add it to a mason jar, add an oxygen absorber, and then go ahead and vacuum seal the lid to keep the moisture out of it. You are gonna need a vacuum sealer for that. And I'll put my type that I use in the descriptions below. If you haven't grabbed a copy of my book yet, go ahead and do so. It's the Farm Girl's Guide to Preserving the Harvest and it is available on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. I'll put that link in the description as well too. If you wanna to continue to follow me along on my journey, we're gonna be putting up a lot of food this year and this was our first. So go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell and we will see you on our next video. I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet, but we'll see you next time. Bye you guys.